What's happening guys? Welcome to the live stream. We're going to be turning up a pen today uh, using one of the blanks that we made from the, the, the aluminum crinkle ornaments, the Mexican aluminum crinkle ornaments, that's a, a mouthful, uh, that Art gave me at the SoCal Pen Turners Gathering. Uh, so I really liked these blanks. They looked really awesome. Um, I think we used... I can't remember exactly, but it's basically pur purple and pink. I don't know what, what we used exactly to make them, but they turned out really cool looking. So let me switch uh, camera views real quick to the lathe. There's the, the cap part uh, ready to go on the lathe. Um, now, one of the things that I wanted to mention, I think we can get through these fine, but I wasn't able to wash off the surfaces of these and resin and metal don't necessarily stick together too well unless you, you know, scuff it up or, or make sure that it's, you know, totally clean. So it may blow up on me. I don't know. I'll probably wear a face mask on this one. Uh, but I hopefully, I don't know, I, I'm going to pull out my, my duct tape of turning and we're going to hit it with some CA glue. Usually that kind of helps things stay together. And I'm going to try and kind of, you know, take it easy when I'm turning it. But uh, I'm really, I'm hoping that we get through it because I think this is going to be a pretty cool looking pen. Uh, so let me put a link real quick to the, if anybody wants to go back and watch us making these, there's the link to that. It's a live stream replay. Um, and we did a couple different things. So uh, if everything goes well uh, on, on mine, uh, these two will be, uh, I'll put them up in my, my website store under the short run section. And then this one, what I plan to do is cut this one into bottle stopper size things, but I really do want to turn um, one of these. I can see, I don't know, let's see if we can get this to work again. Uh, right up in the front right in here it's kind of hard to see on this camera but there's kind of a little bit of a crack looking thing um i that's the only one that i'm seeing i th well there's one right there too yeah there's there's a couple crack looking things in this so that's what makes me a little bit worried i want to turn one of these before i sell them i want to turn one of the pens um and then <clears throat> we had two other ones I'm going to try, unless, unless I'm going to do this later uh, after I've turned one of these as well as the pen, but I'd like to make a sphere out of this, give that, that sphere jig another shot. Um, that could literally blow up in my face <laughs> as well, but hopefully they'll work because it's a really cool material. Uh, and then we have one other one. I think I might leave this one intact. I, I don't know. It just, it seems like that'd be kind of a cool handle. So I don't know. Uh, as long as everything goes well, uh, these guys will be uh, up in my, my store uh, if anybody wants to snag one. Uh, and then I just wanted to show you guys from last, uh, let's see, what, what day is this? Wednesday, today's Wednesday. So on Monday's stream, we cast the Lotus Pod and luckily it didn't float. Uh, my little wedge system <laughs> makeshift while it was, uh, you know, while I was pouring it, it worked, it stayed down and it's looking cool. So this thing I'm going to make uh, kind of a like a, uh, what am I trying to say, a paperweight type deal. Uh, I'm just gonna go kind of simple with this. I don't wanna do a whole lot of stuff. Um, kind of just flatten it and then put kind of a domed top on it. And we'll have to kind of play around with how much of a dome and you know all that kind of stuff. But it should be pretty fun to turn kind of quick. Uh, and, it, and hopefully, you know, most of it, it's, it's gonna be like a super fast uh, turning. Uh, but I don't really wanna cut into uh, this stuff that much. I, I just wanna kind of keep everything intact. And then here's the pen blanks. Hopefully that'll show up on this camera fairly well. Uh, to be honest, the glue splotches are kind of gone. Um, that was what I was actually worried about the most on these. And uh, it seems like I used Liquid Diamonds Epoxy for this one. And uh, it seems like it kind of just all... Uh, uh, usually clear resin and then you pour clear resin on top of it, it just kind of disappears. Um, that doesn't always happen with Alumalite over something like CA glue and some other stuff, but it seems like the liquid diamonds work pretty good on this. So I think that's actually going to turn out pretty good. It's looking good in blank form. Uh, one other thing I wanted to kind of share with you guys, you guys are going to flip out. Check out this gigantic burl that I got. Uh, we did a little bartering and uh, me and Elizabeth over at Two Tree Boys, uh, she sent me out, look at this thing, it's, as, it's bigger than my head. So I'm stoked about this. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited because it's got the really cool valleys and, and little peaks and, and whatever 
um, that make really good dragon egg blanks. You know, uh, Ben over at Ben's Works does a lot with that type of burl. Uh, I'm working on seeing if I can actually get another one uh, from her, maybe even bigger. And I, what uh, someday I want to make a gigantic sphere, like a 14 inch or you know something big, whatever as big as that. That uh, it's not on there right now, but as big as my jig will handle. I want to try that out sometime, and that may be a really cool one. So we'll have to kind of see what's going on with that. But either way, that that one is either going to be. Uh, made into a lot of like dragon egg blanks, or maybe I'll use that as a sphere. I don't know. Well, I, I'm, I'm, it, there's so much burl there that I don't even know what to do with it, and it's pretty exciting. So uh, I wanted to give you guys a link. She's got more of it. Uh, if anybody wants to snag some, she's got all kinds of stuff. And I've gotten wood from her before. I usually mention it when people ask me where I get burl. I get a lot of it from um, Ethan Cook, and he, he has the Aussie Burls USA site you know the funny thing is i've never actually gotten australian burl from him um that, that one is that's a like a brown melee i think uh she I, i'm not entirely sure what it was but it was i think it was brown melee um but anyway i haven't gotten any australian burl from ethan I, I usually get uh maple and buckeye burl from him and he's got excellent stock um just kind of been buying it from him in large quantities but i've gotten lots of stuff from elizabeth as well um, she's awesome. She's got lots of different burls and uh, I think she's actually ramping up uh, her stock. She's going to have a lot more. Um, I was kind of under the impression that she, she used to just kind of take stuff I thought from her husband's tree service. So I thought it was just like excess stuff uh, and I was I guess I was totally wrong. She's got all kinds of different stuff that she's getting in. So um, give her a look. Uh, follow that. That's her website. You can also find her on Instagram and Facebook as well. Uh, so, whoa, you guys are super chatting already. I got Burl and then you super chatted me. It's, it must be my birthday, I think. So anyway, thank you guys. And Art's here. So hopefully this thing will turn out good. Uh, Art's the, the, the guy that gave it to me, the, the Mexican crinkle, uh, aluminum crinkle ornaments. So uh, let's get things rolling here. Um, I have my new camera set up and and i've got everything taped down so hopefully everything will work and and not fall apart and break soon <laughs> so anyway let me stop and see who's all here we got julie's here and and art Al uh alex is here jen doug nice lots of people lots of people lone wolf daryl and uh uh, Brian's here. To, uh, if you guys haven't seen the, the blanks that Brian's been making, I don't know what material that is, but he's, he, it was really cool. It almost looks camo. Um, check him out on, uh, on Instagram, TBC Bushings. Got some cool stuff going on. Milan is here. Chris is here. Nice. Michael Kahn, Steve Coombs. Lots of people. Sweet. All right. So, and Kim just showed up. Nice. Welcome to the stream. All right, so let's uh, let's get going here. So I've, what I've done is, uh, I guess it's the same view uh, as the casting thing. Up in the corner is this camera right here, so you can kind of see me working around. I'm not sure. I, I've been kind of, I was trying to play with different areas. Like I could put it down here, and that might be, I don't know, that might be better. Let's try that for now, see how that works. So first thing I'm going to do, I kind of prefer... Oh, and you, you guys might notice my, my bedways and everything is all shiny and new. Um, I finally cleaned everything off. We have an acid problem in this shop. Um, a while ago, <laughs> I found out that my dad thought it would be a smart idea to let acid in a giant pool evaporate in the shop. Because that's the way you get rid of acid, isn't it? And then I found out, and I was like... Great, and, and at that same time, I started noticing stuff getting all over my cast iron, and I'm like, why are we getting rust? It's a desert, literally. We don't have much humidity, and then I found that out, and after a lot of researching, I, I think that acid was getting all over our stuff, because it was covering his stuff, too, and his tools are covered in oil. And I also thought about the fact that if acid is evaporating, we're probably breathing it. That's healthy. So I put a stop to that quick and we neutralized it, but it just is still lingering. Uh, and so I finally gave up trying to keep it clean because uh, I would have to do it literally every day. 
but I think hopefully now it should stay pretty. Um, and I like to protect my cast iron with that T9 bow shield stuff. That stuff works great as long as you're not dealing with acid. Um, it does great for rust stuff. So let me, let me grab a, the can of it so I can show you guys, just in case no, somebody doesn't know. The way this works, uh, let me see if I'm on camera. The way this stuff works is you just apply a coat of it. What I do is I, I spray it down, let it sit overnight, and then wipe off the residue, and it kind of protects, and it's a little bit of a lubricant. I usually still put wax on top of it, but um, if you haven't heard of it, it's a good product to use been using it for probably, man, I don't know how long, more than 15 years at this point. I started using it right when I got into woodworking. And uh, generally, I apply it to stuff, and it's good for like a year. Um, but, you know, again, I don't have high humidity here, so that affects things a little bit. All right, I'm going to sharpen up my tool. One thing that I have found... Uh, I got my 600 grit wheel on. Uh, that thing will heat up your, your tool steels <laughs> really fast. It's a lot different than the 180. You guys might see see a little burn spot right there. <laughs> I did that yesterday and I went, oh, I got to watch myself. So I like to cut the corners down first with a, a cutting tool. I just, for square blanks, I find it a lot easier. Uh, kind of e uh, easier on me kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to put a face mask on because there is kind of high likelihood that this thing could blow up. And before, actually, before we even begin, oh, I got to get my phone out. That's one thing. Before we begin, I'm going to actually just hit this blank with some CA glue. I haven't doused it yet. So let's do that real quick. Let me get this light on also so that hopefully it'll be even brighter. Uh, does that blow you guys out? No. No, you're okay. All right, so let's just douse this and it's just kind of hopefully, uh, this is the super fast thin from Starbond. And I like to just douse it on stuff and it, it is kind of penetrating. It'll kind of seep down into any little cracks and stuff like that. Uh, which may have formed on this blank. Uh, between the resin and the metal. So let's just, we'll give it a good little coating. And it actually, it does look like it is kind of sucking some up. I don't know. So this is probably a smart idea. I always do this on blanks that may be problematic. It just, you know, CA glue doesn't really cost that much. <laughs> so... It's a really kind of cheap way to kind of put the cards in your favor. Stack the deck a little bit. And to be honest, I mean, I don't even, I can't remember the last time a blank blew up on me. Uh, to be honest, like that really just came apart. Usually these methods kind of do the job, you know. Um, but there is a little bit of prep work also. You, there's, there's some stuff that I do preparing blanks like this um, when I'm, you know, drilling it out and, and, and gluing the tube in and all that kind of stuff that also kind of stack the cards in my favor. Um, I'm actually going to go grab a link for anybody that's kind of new uh, that hasn't seen my video on how I prepare blanks uh, for, for like, like mixed material blanks that may be problematic. So let me search for that real quick and grab you guys a link for the chat. Want to sell online? Oh, oh, calm down lady. Just need a link. All right. So here's a link to that if anybody wants to check that out. That's just a regular video. Um, and to be honest, a lot of those things I do regardless, like it's not even necessary. Well, I, a lot of what I do is going to be mixed materials. I don't really, um, or, you know, and especially acrylics, but I find, especially on pen blanks, 
I'm just going to hit this with some accelerator just to make sure everything's dry on the surface. It's not going to fly, fling off and hit me in the face. Um, it's kind of the way that I prep pen, you know, pen blanks no matter what. Um, and it just kind of seems to, to work pretty good. I actually, I got to get some wax on the top of that tool rest real quick. Now that everything else is shiny, I can really tell when, <laughs> when something isn't shiny. In fact, that thing is kind of... I'm going to actually hit that with a little bit of scotch Bright pad. This is actually exactly how I did my, my bedways. I have these little scotch Bright pads that are kind of high, high grit. I'll give you guys a shot of it. It's, it's made by Merca, but I mean, whatever kind of, there's, there's lots of different, you know, brands of this kind of stuff. Um, and, and to clean off everything on the bedways, I was using a little bit of mineral spirits and then just with the scotch Bright pad. And it takes about maybe 10 minutes to get everything cleaned up. Pretty simple. And then for this, I'm just putting a little bit of wax on the tool rest after hitting it with some that scotch Bright. It had a little bit of that acid rust junk. And I know a lot of you may be saying, but I see you wet sanding on your lathe all the time. How do you know that it's not rust? And the answer to that is, because I honestly thought it was rust for a long time, but it's actually a layer of something on top of the, the metal. Uh, and the reason I know it's not because of me wet sanding is because it's all over pretty much everything in the shop, not just areas where I wet sand. So that's exciting. Do the final wipe off. Now we are so set. Oh my gosh. I'm going to hit the, the dust collector. So hopefully it won't be too loud for you guys, but this should kind of suck some of the dust off. Get my face shield on. And actually, before I even begin, I want to get my phone out so that I can see the chat. So I'm not just talking to you guys. I can actually see what you're saying. Let me get this going. <clears throat> you guys may like my, my new look, Crocs and short socks. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, too much, too much. All right, there we go. We got us some video here. I can kind of look at the chat and Still gotta get my face mask on. Cause I don't like shrapnel. So far so good. All right, let's see. Whoa, that's looking pretty wicked. I can't hear myself think with this dust collector on. That is sweet. Let's try and zoom in a little bit. Get my hand under here so hopefully it'll focus. Look at that. So, so far everything's looking good. Um, I'm not seeing any like major cracking or falling apart or anything like that. But man, this, you know, I, I honestly had no clue going into this, like this was going to be that cool looking. It didn't even occur to me. And this is one of the reasons why I like doing experiments with, you know, random materials. And what I find, especially for pen blanks is, you know, in the case of these ornaments, 
I think in the future I may, if I, if I had more of it, I would probably just hit it with acetone because you really can't see much of the paint on it. There's a little bit right there, I guess, that you could see, but that's not really what's cool looking. It's this kind of crinkly edge. So, you know, I, and I just, it didn't even occur to me that that would, that pattern would end up in the, the blanks. So I'm pretty excited. What do you guys think about that thing? It's looking pretty good. All right, let's keep going. Actually, real quick, what I'm going to do is... So everything's been going good so far, uh, but this is not the time to be like, oh, we're fine. This is the time to hit it again <laughs> with more CA glue. Uh, so I'm going to slow the lathe down a little bit. I'm just going to douse it. It's kind of hard my dust collector things in the way here. Come on. Put some out there. I think I need a bigger hole in my CA glue tip. <clears throat> I'm going to make another. I'm going to make a bigger hole because the, the CA glue is just not even coming out of this thing. And I want some CA glue to come out. So what's everybody working on in their shop? Anybody got some cool projects going? Something interesting, something different. I know Brian's doing some cool stuff with some pen blanks. Um, are you willing to share what, what material is that? I understand if you don't want to tell, <laughs> but I figured I'd ask just in case. Look like little paint chip type things or something. I don't know. It uh, really looks like a kind of urban camo type thing. And I'm going to do it this other handed. So again, what I'm trying to do is get this CA glue to soak in uh, as best as it, it will into any little cracks. That way we seal them up and it keeps everything together before we apply the pressure of turning onto it. But man, you can, so this is kind of a, a good idea of what it's gonna look like with the finish on it. It's really cool looking. Now, I think it's going to get fairly um, transparent. I don't think that we put, you know, a ton of, of color pigment into it. So I think it's going to uh, get pretty transparent. I used black tubes. Um, I just used, you know, the, the black tube. I didn't paint the inside of the blank. I wanted to kind of keep as much, you know, depth in the blank as possible. I guess painting the inside of the blank would have worked all right as well, but that's more work. So, <clears throat> let's make sure that's all nice and hardened up. I think I'm going to keep going with the, the cutting tool for now, and then I'll do kind of the final shaping. This is the cap portion of a Junior, um, junior Duke kit. So, giant pine cone nightlight. That's awesome. Custom segmented pen blanks, sweet. Polymer clay pen, sweet. I haven't actually turned one of those before. I wanted to try and make some, uh, but, ah, the rest only, nice, that's cool. Thanks, Brian. Paint chips, did you eat paint chips as a kid? <laughs> Duck calls and an aromatherapy necklace, awesome. Mertz on pens. Yeah, sometimes that happens, you know, you do these kind of more, even if they're not big, they're just sometimes bigger, hard, harder, more difficult projects that take a little bit. You're like, oh, just give me a pen to turn. They're a little bit quicker. Give me some quick projects. All right, speed it back up. So I'm going to keep going with the, the cutting tool for a minute here. Getting good results with it so far, so why not keep it up?
right, we're getting there. Getting pretty close. Not seeing tube or anything like that, and nothing, nothing really standing out yet. We don't really have a whole lot more to go. So, um, one thing about you know the difference between like on this putting a white blank or, or you know white um, tube behind it. Let me go get just just so people know. I, I end up getting the powder coated tubes from Turner's Warehouse. They're just so much easier than me having to paint them. Um, but you know, you could go with a white one, or in this case, I went with a black one. Um, a black, if you put black behind it, it's going to kind of darken your colors in your blank. If it's something that's kind of semi, semi transparent, translucent kind of colors, black will kind of darken it a little bit more, where white will kind of brighten it a little bit. Um, and then you can also use the nickel plated tubes, and that will kind of um, also brighten, uh, but it won't really affect, it won't really alter colors. It's not going to change the hues much the way it looks it's just going to be kind of shiny back there so you'll get more light reflection that's one of the reasons why i like to use the nickel plated tubes a lot um, if you can if light can kind of penetrate in um, it'll bounce back so it, it appears kind of brighter with those nickel plated tubes a lot of times is the collector really loud everybody said it wasn't that that uh that loud Last time. Yeah, actually, the dust collection works really well um, if you have it right up. If I put it right where, like right here behind the, the blank, it'll collect pretty much everything on a pen. Um, you might get a little bit, but um, I got to be honest, if it's really loud, I don't really care. I'll, I don't mind turning the fan on. Um, I'd rather not ruin you guys. I don't, to be honest, I don't like listening to it. It's, you know... I should really think about that. The problem is the collector is literally right behind the lathe, so it's going to be loud um, no matter what. I might be able to do something different with that and just run a little bit more duct to it. So let me let me know what you guys think. It's not that bad. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like watching a movie. <laughs> uh, how to check pressure valves. I'm not entirely certain what you mean on, like, the safety. Is that what you're asking? I don't know how to check them other than that. I think my microphone actually deadens the sound a little bit because it's really loud. I don't know. It's loud to me. Like, I don't, I don't like listening to it personally. <laughs> we are letting you know. <laughs> It's not on right now, guys. <laughs> that is the quietest dust collector ever. All right, well, I'll turn it back on then, since it's kind of kind of doing a little bit of work. Uh, it kind of just keeps it out of my face, you know, so you can kind of get it in there. All right, so let's keep on going here. rest is a little bit high.
All right, how are we looking now? Should be just about there. Pretty close on that end. I think I'm gonna pull out the, pretty close on this end too. I think I'm gonna pull out the, the carbide. See if I can get the R2 carbide to kind of flatten some of these bumps out. I got a few kind of tool marks going on. Try and flatten that out a little bit and then I'm just gonna kind of come in with the, the, the spindle gouge and just kind of try and trim up those ends and get those things flush with the, um, I'm gonna turn the fan on too. Uh, get them flush with the bushings there. Don't think it's coming apart at this point. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's take a look at these ends. I think they should be pretty good on the end. We got it pretty pretty well trimmed up there. A little bit low for the carbide, so we're gonna bring that up just a hair. Oh, and then we'll try and just do a little bit of smoothing out here with the the R2. All right. <clears throat> Trying to be kind of careful with this one. I want to, I'm putting a little bit of extra time into it because I'm really excited about how it looks. It's, it's just an interesting blank. Ashley's here, what's up? Uh, Sandy, I, I do. I have the CBN wheels um, from uh, Wood Turner's Wonders, and I just upgraded to a 600 grit. Um, I got to be honest, 400 might have been a better way to go. I'm finding that it kind of burns the tool steel pretty easily, um, which is uh, what I had before for like the highest grit was a 180, and it definitely doesn't heat up your tool steel. So it's kind of, I'm, I'm getting used to, to using that, but... Um, on my grinder, I have a 180 and a 600. I think you could probably easily, 400 is probably good enough. I don't know that I'm getting tool edges that are so much better than the 180 that it's like going to double the life <laughs> of the edge. So I don't know. You, you might want to talk to to Ken Rizza over there and, and just kind of, if you're looking at these things, he's he knows what he's talking about. Um, but I got the, the Super Mega Square one. And I'll be using that to, uh, the nice thing about it is you can use the side of the wheels um, very easily to, to do skew chisels and different stuff. So got that on the 600 and then I have 180 grit 
foreign one is the the one that they have and those are pretty cool too um, but really any cbn wheel uh, is what i would recommend if you're if you have a grinder set up it just there's really at this point no reason to have regular grinding wheels they just suck <laughs> there's just no no good reason to use those i don't think uh, but I've had the 180 grit and, a, and an 80 grit before um, for many years now, probably five to six, I would say. Uh, and they work fabulously. All right, so the surface is pretty good, but I think we're going to start sanding with uh, the, some 400 grit, just dry. Let's turn the speeds down here real quick. Um, I could put a, a CA finish on this. Uh, I don't, I don't know which way to go. I mean, my, typically that's kind of what I would do. Actually, I need to, that's, that's a little bit above the bushing. I, I got a little bit more work to do now that I touched that. Um, I don't know. I would typically put a CA finish on this, so I'm not, I'm not sure. I think that's probably the better way to go. I think, I think we'll do a CA finish. I just think that typically for like metals and things that are embedded, I, I kind of find that to be Putting, putting a top coat finish on is kind of the way to go. Just to make sure that you're protecting everything. <clears throat> All right, so. That's better. So let's do a little bit of sanding here. I'm gonna turn the, the dust, the dust collector for sanding, that is where it really shines. You're not gonna collect a bunch of shavings uh, necessarily. It's not necessarily gonna do the best for shavings, but man, it will do wonders for the sanding dust. I think it's worth hooking one up just for that. like I said, especially if you move the, the collector closer than what I have it right now. Got me a fresh piece of 400. Okay, good to go. Let's do a little bit of wet sanding. I don't want to move that thing. It's kind of set up perfectly. <laughs> Let me stop, see what you guys are up to in here. Thanks, Saint. That was a little so hot in California. Yeah, it's actually pretty warm here too. It's starting to warm up. No, I don't really worry about sanding the bushings. I I I mean it's I guess you could worry about that, but I'd rather just replace bushings and <laughs> not worry about it personally. I don't know. How, does anybody else like try to avoid that? I, I don't know. I'm just always just kind of sanded. Without worrying about it. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to do a little bit of 220 grit wet, and then we'll go up to 600, I think, and then we'll put a CA finish on. Did I say 220? That is not what I meant. We're gonna start with 400 grit wet. Then we'll go up to about 600, I think. 
I've been liking this uh, silicon carbide paper. Seems to work good and it seems to last a, a good amount of time as, as well. So definitely, you know, if you get, get your hands on some, give it a shot. Um, I still like the, the um, what are these guys, the Zona polishing papers. I like them definitely for kind of the final higher grits. If I'm just polishing uh, the, the resin. But I think for your kind of like heavy duty sanding, this stuff rivals Abernet for sure. For wet, wet sanding, I should say. I, don't, I wouldn't use this stuff for dry. Abernet works okay too. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. And it works for dry sanding as well as wet, but I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of digging the, the silicon carbide for wet sanding and I've been kind of doing it for, I don't know, a few, maybe about a month now, just kind of testing it out. So far, no complaints. So again, this is 400 grit wet. That'll just make sure that if we got any kind of deeper gouges when we were doing the 400 dry, we'll remove all that. So I think that's probably good enough on that one. And we'll move up to some 600 if I can find one. There it is. You don't need to polish it way high to put a, you know, before putting a CA finish on or any kind of top coat. Um, the, the two things, one, you kind of want a little bit of something for the, the finish to bite into. So it helps to have some kind of, you know, sanding grit grooves. Uh, but it also, um, it's going to fill in any grooves, the, the, the finishes, and they're going to disappear. So you don't really need to go too high. 600, maybe 1,000. Honestly, you could probably get away with 400. So let's just, let's go to 600 today and see how that does. All right, that should be good. Put a finish on this guy. dry out get my sanding bucket out of the way so let's see does anybody have any thoughts about sanding your bushings um, I bought I, I prefer Merca uh, I've been using Merca brand for a while so it, uh, you know that's just what I bought um, but you can use anything I do recommend don't get a cheap one don't go to Harbor Freight and buy sandpaper that stuff sucks um, buy a, a reasonable brand, you know, like Klingspore or 3M or, you know, something like that, Norton. Um, but any wet, dry sandpaper, silicon carbide should do the same. Let's see here. Sending you more snow. I'm at the point where there's, I can't go snowboarding, so I don't want any more snow either. Yeah, silicon carbide is automotive wet dry paper. Mm, does anybody have any bushing? I should probably, you know who you need to ask is TBC Bushings. <laughs> he makes them. I don't know. I don't I didn't see anybody Daryl Sands his. Yeah. Yeah, Dar uh, on, if I was just do if I wasn't doing a CA finish, I would sand up and then buff. Uh, but we're putting a CA finish on this guy. So there's really no reason to sand to 12,000 grit and then put a finish on. In fact, it it may actually cause problems with your finish not binding to the material. Sorry if I just made a really loud noise in the microphone. I was trying to get dust crumbs off 
All right, so uh, first thing I'm going to do, um, you guys have probably seen me do this before. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of thin. Actually, you know what? It doesn't need it. I'm not that worried about, there's, there's no actual like divots or anything. This is a pretty solid surface. We've already filled stuff, so I'm just going to move straight to the mercury. This is the one that I usually use. And I mean, honestly, they all kind of work fine. <laughs> you know, it's, I think the difference between brands a lot of times it just has to do with, you know, pick the one that you can apply smoothly, like the smoothest finish. And uh, Thin Flex from Mercury has kind of the perfect open time. I, I do like the look of it at the end. It does seem a little bit better than some of the ones that I've tried in the past, but I, it's all up to you. I, you know, honestly, I think they all kind of work. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't fret over what kind of CA glue you're using. So put the first coat on and I'm gonna let that just kind of soak in and dry on its own. And then from there, once that's dried, every coat that I put on is gonna be, I'm just gonna hit it with the accelerator. Um, that is a that is where, depending on where you're at, you may or may not, and maybe the brand of CA glue, you may or may not wanna use accelerator. Um, you don't really have to. I just do it to speed things up. Um, but I think that I've, I've heard from people that are in more humid areas that accelerators kind of don't work as well. C certain brands of CA, I've never had problems with any brand with any accelerator, but just, just a little bit of a warning. Glossy. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, it's not like you're gonna sand down the the bushings to the point where like they're you know there's oh man that looks fabulous. Let me zoom in on this. I'm gonna try and center it here for you guys. I know it's out of focus real quick for now, but let me try and get this thing. Centered, and then we'll put my hand underneath it so it'll focus properly. I can't see if it's focusing. There. Look at that, guys. Holy cow. That is a wicked pen blank. I mean, I can think of a lot of really cool... This was a really cool color combination, but I can think of a ton of really cool color combinations with the, that kind of silver crinkly thing. It would be really cool. Wow. Okay, so our first coat is nice and dry. Let's zoom you guys back out. You can see my beautiful model feet, Crocs and socks. It's what everybody's wearing in their workshop this, this year. Coat number two. Let me get my trash can closer. That'll make things a lot nicer. And then I hit it with the accelerator. Give it a few seconds to think about what it's done. Thanks guys, yeah, that thing. So again, two, two big thank yous because you know I cast it and that's great, but big thank you to Art for hooking me up with this cool crinkle stuff. And uh, I know that, I think it was, was it Julie and Jen that picked the colors on this? I can't remember. You guys will have to go back and watch. Maybe if you're here, you'll, you know. Pretty sure Jen was the pink in this. I think Jen picked the pink and I think Julie might have picked purple. I don't know. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but really good color combination. All right. So number three, coat number three is on and usually the way that I do this I'm going to put four coats on then I'm going to sand it and kind of smooth everything out and then we'll put maybe two or three more coats on after that and try and get that on get those coats on really smooth flossy <laughs> yes Yeah, well, uh, yeah, you definitely, all you got to do is just hit it with the denatured alcohol or acetone or anything, and it'll come off. 
I like the color in those things though. I mean, it actually does add a little bit because you can see the, you can see part of the, I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can see some colors on it. Like right there, there's some orange. So I, I don't know, like you could just go without color. Um, and what that would do also, if you soak it in acetone, that'll also help make sure that if there's any, you know, anything in there that, that may cause a problem with the resin, um, it'll get rid of it. But uh, if you want the color, you know, you, you, you really can't soak it in anything because it just takes it right off. We learned that lesson quick. All right, so coat number four. And I go for thin coats. I don't want to put on a thick mass of it. Um, if you're putting a pretty thick mass on, you may run into problems with your bushings sticking. Uh, generally, mine come off. I've only had a few problems, but they, they, you know, I am putting kind of a layer of CA glue on, but I'm not putting a thick coat of it. Uh, so they generally come off pretty easy for me. Um, I would, if you're, one thing, so some people apply it where you just kind of use your glove to spread it out. In that case, every single time I've done that, I've totally gotten the bushing stuck and I've actually had to come in and turn the CA finish off to get it off of there. So that, if you're going to do it that way, it's just leaving, you know, you're, you're not the, when I do it with a paper towel, the paper towel absorbs a lot of the CA that I put on. Uh, and so, you know, I'm putting a pretty thin coat on, but if you're just putting it on your glove, it's, the CA is not going anywhere. All of whatever you dumped on there is getting on there. And so you, you end up creating a pretty thick coating. Um, the other way, let's see, what was the other thing that I, oh, if you use medium thickness, typically that is also, cause you're kind of putting a thicker layer on. That's a really easy way to get your bushing stuck. Uh, but you can use the Delrin bushings. They make, uh, Brian sells them. They got them at Turner's Warehouse. They make bushings for finishing. Do I have some? I used to have some. I don't like them personally because they're, they get in the way. Uh, and, I, and I know I could probably just turn them down or whatever, but I just, I don't really need to use them. Uh, but these things are like an like a HDPE material or something, Delrin. Um, and it's non-stick. So the problem also is you got to use these with a mandrel. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is there, maybe you, could you, can you use, I guess you could just stick these between centers. I've never done it before. Um, so if anybody knows for sure, I actually, yeah, there, there is a little bit of a 60 degree thing back. I guess it probably doesn't matter that much. I don't use them, but this is a good way to make sure that you don't get your bush, your, your, pen blanks stuck to your bushings. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of light sanding with some 400. And that's just getting ridges out and making everything nice and smooth. The key to getting a super nice finish is it has to be flat and, you know, kind of the CA, the, the, the clear coat has to be nice and flat. You can't have ridges in it or it'll, it'll look terrible. So at this point, all the low spots are shiny. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's zoom in a little bit. See all those? Those are little low spots. So I'm going to do a little bit more sanding here. Try and get most of those out and then we'll put on two or three more coats, I'll be done. There's a billion different ways to apply a CA finish, that's for sure. So um, I recommend, some, some ways did not work for me. Um, this is one of those things where uh, there's a lot of ways to do it and you gotta kinda find the one that you are good at, <laughs> I think. All right, so I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna wipe this off a little bit. You wanna make sure you get all the sanding dust off. And we'll go for, let me zoom out. That's pretty, pretty zoomed in there. Let me get another paper towel ready. All 
All right, Mert, thanks for stopping by, man. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, once I've gotten everything done, I, I do soak the, the bushings in acetone. Pops the CA right off. Or I should say just dissolves it, basically. All right, so coat number one. Final coat number one. Uh, and depending on the temperature, humidity levels, you know, the, you'll have to kind of play with your each kind of CA glue. Um, I'm dry here in Nevada, and it's it's not very warm in here, so this stuff works pretty well for me. Humi I think high humidity levels will definitely affect CA glue. I think that moisture cures it, basically. Number two. <laughs> talking you off the cliff what are you guys talking about stay away from the cliff and if you've done a really good job you should be able to start with a pretty high grit we'll have to kind of see see where we're at So this is the cap portion of the pen kit. Where did I put that? Here it is. I thought it'd be kind of cool to use the Junior Duke kit for this one. I had, uh, what are these, the antique silver version of it. I thought, oh, I don't know, maybe this will work good. It'll kind of match the, the like barbed wire stuff. So you got that on the center band. A little bit of barbed wire and then uh, a star on the top. The little finial part. So pretty cool, pretty cool kit. Uh, I don't think they, they're pretty reasonably priced for a, a roller ball also. I don't know the, the price tag on off the top of my head. Maybe like 15 to 20, somewhere in there. So should be kind of fun. Are there issues with tossing your CA paper smoke? Yeah, they do smoke on you sometimes. I, I don't think that they would start a fire. I've never had them like light on fire. <laughs> That's for sure. But it does heat up really hot when it when it's curing. All right, so we got a few little few little marks. I think I'm going to start again with the 400 grit. See what that looks like again that'll tell me you know any shiny spots are going to be low spots if we don't have too many low spots i'm going to move up to the zona polishing papers right away I see a couple shiny spots yeah had a few shiny spots so i'm just going to keep going here and flatten all that out right in that middle part that I'd like to take down. Smooth it out. All right, I think we're good to go. So we're gonna move up to the zone of papers.
Start out with the green one that's around, I think, 750 grit, something like that. Who loves sanding? I do, I do. <laughs> no thanks. I don't mind polishing, like pens are pretty easy for sanding. You just kind of stand there and hold the paper on there, but some of the bigger projects, man, you can sit there for quite a while. It's tedious. You gotta be ready for it. I'm going to wipe this off and take a look and make sure that I've gotten all the, uh, not only the low spots out, the shiny spots, but I also want to just look at the surface and make sure that I'm gotten it set to up to this, this grit that we're at. And it looks like we got a few scratches down here that are a little bit deeper. So I think I'm going to go a little bit longer on this end with it and just make sure that I've gotten everything out. You gotta be careful though with CA finishes. You don't wanna sand through it. If you sand it all off, then you're kinda of screwed. You gotta add more. All right, so that's looking pretty good, I think. Move up to the gray, which is around 1150 grit or so maybe, something like that. And just for good measure, we're going to hit it with the blue. I've been starting to do that. I, I usually kind of stop at the gray. But I've been getting good results, so it can't hurt anything to go up a little higher. But I'm going to finish off uh, with the buffing wheels. So once we get this done with the blue, basically I'm just going to take this off, set it aside, and then we'll do the, the buffing on both parts after I turn the second half of this pen, get it all finished up. Um, a lot of people like to just go all the way up with uh, your, your Zona or Micro Mesh or whatever papers. Um, that can work. I personally get better results using buffing wheels. Just find it a little bit, I, it's more enjoyable uh, to me, and I, I get more consistent results doing it that way personally. But I mean, the, all, of these, all of these different methods are the same thing. You're just successively sanding with a higher and higher grit <laughs> so whichever way works for you is the way that i recommend doing it but man look at that thing holy cow it's got some really cool colors in it purples pinks oranges a little bit so let's uh get this thing off of here so Let's see if, yeah, my bush, well, this bushing came off. So I don't have to worry about that. Got some fuzzies, some sanding on there. This one is kind of stuck, and all I do is I just kind of tap it, and it pops right off. Now, at this point, what you have to watch out for, if you kind of tap off and, like, you know, do what I just did, on the ends of this thing, you can have some little kind of parts, you know, like pieces of CA glue that are kind of hanging over the edge. There's one. So you got to be really careful. What I do is I just use a, a mandrel, pen turning mandrel, with a piece of sandpaper on it. 
And you could get all kind of crazy with the, um, where are those things? Do I have them? Hmm. Yeah, like the, what am I trying to say? The, the things, the sleeves that go over, I guess, actually, does it work on these? You can maybe use bushings and stuff. You could figure out some sort of a system to use this. But I find that if you just hold down, you know, and, and spin this thing around, keeping the tube riding along the shaft, then it's going to be perpendicular. It's not like we're really doing a lot of sanding, but you just want to get that end of it. Make sure the ends are not, there's no material hanging off uh, past the edge of the, the tube. Because the problem is when you put these together, when you assemble your pen, if you have CA glue finish kind of hanging off, it's going to, when you press the parts, it's going to crack your finish. So you got to make sure that you don't have any extra, extra material that's hanging out there. It will, it will make your day a little bit worse. So then you got to take the pen apart, refinish it. And that's probably not going to work because you're already mad, you know. And better to just do this and not have to worry. And you make sure that your ends are totally squared up. All right, so we'll just set this aside because we're going to... We're going to buff both of them together. I don't need to do that. And we'll get the other half ready to rock, the pen part. Let me stop real quick, see what's happening. Yeah, Turner's Warehouse is really fast with their service. I, well, and, and I, I live, you know, on the West Coast, so... I mean, I get stuff super fast. Um, my problem is most of the suppliers are somewhere Midwest, you know, I mean, I'm, most of them are like East Coast or Midwest. And so it takes days. That's if they actually ship the thing, you know, within a few days. A lot of times these bigger companies, like Penn State was the worst with their shipping. They'd like hold on to the package for like two weeks and then it would take three days to get to my door <laughs> once they actually shipped it. And I'm like, God, I couldn't, I, I couldn't handle that company. I quit using them a long time ago. All right. So here's the second half. And another little kind of tip trick thing that I do. Um, I like to put marks on the blank. So when this was full, I put a little triangle between where I was cutting it. That way I can line it back up. The problem is you're going to turn that away on the outside. So what I do is, and I don't have the other, actually I have the other, I have the other blank over here. I can show you. So back when this was square, it's easier when it's square to do this. Um, I had the mark on top of this and it was, it was a square and I just basically open them up and then I put a mark inside each of them so that if it's a case where lining up the blank correctly in the right orientation uh, is better, then you have marks and you can actually do that. Um, this one probably isn't going to matter, honestly, but still, I like to have the marks just in case so that I know how it was originally, you know, laid out in, in the blank before I turned it. I think I've seen some other, I've seen other ways that people do that too. Pretty clever ones. All right, let's see here. Dave's out of here. Thanks for stopping by, Dave. How many days do you wait to turn after removing from the pressure pot? Um, I wait, it kind of depends. I mean, realistically, you can turn alumilite blanks for the most part. You could literally turn them right after you pulled them out a lot of times, but the thing is, they don't cure for five days. They're not fully cured for five days. So 
I usually cut blanks up the next day. I, I cut my, you know, if I'm making a batch of pen blanks, I'll cut the brick up the next day. And then I set them aside and I usually don't turn them for five days. You know, I give them the full time. And, and really the only thing about that is going to be polishing uh, the resin because you can turn it, you know, fine. I would say within a couple days. I, I don't think you're going to get any problems if you wait just, you know, two to three days. But why not just wait two more days, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, what ends up happening is if it's not fully cured, it's not fully hard, and it's a little bit, you're not going to get it as polished. One thing that I, I, I don't know, I don't think that it shrinks. Like, Alumilite does, it, it has a really, really low shrinkage factor, but one thing that I've thought of is... Uh, and possibly you could use this to your advantage maybe, but um, when if you like pulled them out of the pressure pot and then drilled them for like pen blanks, you know, cut them up and then drilled the hole, it might actually shrink um, <laughs> a little bit. And so that may be good in some cases, I don't know, but um, that's, that's, I just, I'd rather have the thing totally stable, totally finished up so that when I turn it, everything's going to go the way I think. But I think you're fine if you just wait a day or two. Let's see here. Yeah, you like that, Robert? I, I, it took me many years before I thought of that idea. I'm like, you know, I need to figure this out. Because sometimes you got blanks that... The pattern, you know, like really, you need to have that thing lined up. Otherwise, the blank's going to look terrible, the pen. And so I finally figured out, like, oh, I should just put a mark on it. That's, you know, the, the, the key is you got to remember to mark the thing, when, uh, you know, before, you're, <laughs> before you turn it. But anyway. All right, so actually, before we begin, um, I want to hit this with some CA glue. We had really good results on the first one. I'd like to keep up that, keep that going. CA bottle is just not working with me today. It's actually the tip of the CA bottle. Hopefully that did it. There we go. And if you're just joining the fun, uh, like I explained on the first half, um, what I'm doing is if there's any problems, I'm a little worried that this metal and the, the resin is not going to have a good bond, in which if it doesn't, it can just blow apart when I'm turning it. So I'm adding a little bit of super thin CA glue. Um, it, it tends to seep in. It's the super fast thin from Starbond, and I mean, really pretty much most thin. You can you can look up the viscosities, whatever the viscosity is of this. Um, you know any brand will do, uh, as long as it's got the same viscosity. Um, but it it tends to kind of soak in to like really small cracks and things. And that way we're just kind of putting the cards in our favor, stacking the deck a little bit. Uh, so that it doesn't come apart if there are any areas that have a kind of a weak bond Hopefully we're we're gluing them together before we start And eliminating that problem <clears throat> A little bit of preparation You know this kind of Preparation before you start turning uh, can kind of go a long way and it seems to be working I kind of do the same things on most projects. If I think that it's going to be kind of problematic, I'll just hit it with CA glue. It seems to work pretty good. It's like the duct tape for turning.
Yeah, it's some sort of an aluminum. It's, it's made out of aluminum, um, kind of like a, a soda can. But uh, yeah, crinkly, it, they're, they're Mexican ornaments. I think they call them crinkle ornaments, aluminum crinkle ornaments. Cool. All right, so, and you don't want to, you want to give it some time to kind of soak in. Um, it should be pretty much dry, but I'm just going to hit it with accelerator just to make sure that I'm not turning liquid CA. <laughs> I don't want that stuff. Or when you turn the lathe on, it goes flinging into your eyeball. Not a good idea. Hit it with some accelerator, make sure all the surface stuff is hardened up. And again, I'm going to go for the face mask. Not a bad idea just in case this thing does decide to blow apart on me. And I'm probably gonna stop some, we'll, we'll kind of have to see how this goes while I'm turning it, but I'll probably stop and, and douse it uh, at least one more time while turning it, uh, just to make sure that everything's good to go on, on the bond. And then we'll just kind of keep our fingers crossed and hope everything goes good. So let's do it. I don't need these gloves on anymore. And actually, before I begin, I'm going to touch up my tool. Um, light cuts, sharp tools, all that kind of stuff. And uh, those, those also help you to get through some of the difficult things. And I'm sure that the easy wood tools, you know, like the carbide or whatever, I'm sure they'll work fine. I, I kind of prefer using... Um, cutting tools to, to, to take a blank down from square. Um, but today I think we're just gonna kind of keep going. It, it was working fine, it's cutting good. So we'll probably just kind of go and use, use the, the cutting tool mostly today on this one. But either way, should get good results. Okay, now we're ready. So I was going a little bit less easy on it. It seems to be doing just fine, you know? And I, I don't know if it would be different had I not hit it with CA glue, you know? Don't really care to test that theory. <laughs> I think you're better off just, you know, using that as a little bit of insurance. But I mean, it's turning fine. And another thing, the aluminum's not gonna be a problem for any cutting tool. Um, you know, you can use high-speed steel, it'll cut aluminum that thin, no problem and uh, your, your carbide will handle it absolutely no problem. So um, you don't have to worry about that on blanks like this. But it seems, like I said, seems to be going pretty good. I'm not necessarily going that easy on it right now. Taking decent cuts, quick cuts, and it's holding up pretty fine. So let's keep on going.
All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of more CA dousing here. Like I said, it just, it doesn't hurt anything, so why not? <laughs> Medical coding and billing, no, no thanks. Yeah, <laughs> I would like, we would all like our bills removed. <laughs> I like that. All right, so I'm just going to kind of give it another dousing here. Man, these colors with the silver. This kind of reminds me of like, uh, what am I thinking of? Kind of looks like, uh, I don't know, like the Roaring Twenties, Art Deco. Um, I don't know, something, something <laughs> like that. It's a really cool look. I like it. Hey, what's up, Dave? How's it going? Uh, to be honest, though, this is a spindle gouge. However, I actually do sharpen it to a high degree angle. Um, it's not like neg I don't think there is such thing as a negative rake gouge but i think that i have it set at like 50. typically i think um i don't i don't look at it this works for me and i do think that it makes a difference um let me let me pull out a, a, a measuring gauge thing angle gauge Yeah, this thing's it's like almost 60, I want to say. Let's see here. No, the problem is it's kind of hard to... Yeah, so I grinded it at about 60. It's pretty high angle. Is that a low angle, high angle? Whereas I think that traditionally, like a spindle gouge, actually I have my Thompson sharpening doohickey right here. Uh, it says spindle gouge 40. So I, I sharpen it like a bowl gouge. Um, and, and I think what ended up happening was I forgot to change my little one-way tool thing around a long time ago and didn't even realize it and I got really good results it seemed to work fine <laughs> so um you know but if you're if you're doing certain spindle things you're, you're probably better off running it at 40 um, but not bad and actually Curtis Seebeck always said that he uses bowl gouges when he turns um, I think that on resin I think it might be advantageous actually to turn I don't know give it a shot that's all I have to say. It works for me. Um, it might work for you going up uh, with a, a higher angle if you're using a gouge. But it is a little different than a bowl gouge. I guess I should kind of point that out. Um, where's my bowl gouge at? The actual tool steel is a little bit, where the heck is my, oh, there it is. 
It's a little bit different than a half inch bowl gouge. You know, the flute's different, but I'm sharpening it at the same angle. Okay, let's keep going here. One little word of caution for you guys. If you're turning something that's got metal in it, I would really, and, and it's hard for a lot of us, I would really caution you not to, while the thing is spinning, try and you know, feel it with your fingers. Uh, because the metal could, there is a little raised portion right here. You know, it could cut you. Uh, so you got to be a little bit careful. Try and, try and be mindful. I know it's actually kind of hard. Sometimes I kind of forget and catch myself. Um, but you could, it could cut you if there's a little piece of metal sticking out of there. Just watch out for that. But it's looking pretty good so far. Not having any problems turning this thing. Kind of a dense area where the the stuff is kind of bunched up right here that's a little bit kind of a little rough i could and i could kind of feel this area it just felt different when i was turning so i'm going to kind of keep an eye on that watch watch that area a little bit but it's going pretty good So we've almost got this end down. I still need to do a little bit of shaping, take some material off, but I think I'm gonna douse this little area just cause it's a little bit weird with a little bit of CA glue again. It's just kind of like a dense area of that metal. So not a bad idea to just hit it again. All right. Thin CA. I gotta get another paper towel. Whoo, man. So it's Wednesday night, which means we technically we aren't like going out to dinner, but we usually eat. right now we're gonna have to grab something and go. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. I think we're gonna have Thai food. We got a really good Thai food plate. This sucks with my left hand. My dust collector thing is like right in the way of where I normally stand and it's screwing things up with the application of CA glue. <laughs> Having troubles. Just to make sure everything's staying where it should.
nearly there. A little bit of work to do on those ends. Senpai, thanks for the super chat. I appreciate it. Did I miss anybody else's? Okay, I just want to make sure. That's yeah, awesome. <laughs> Tool touching. You got to watch out. All right, we got it almost. This side needs to be taken down just a little bit more. So let's do that real quick. Okay. Do a little bit of smoothing. Smooth it out with the, the R2 cutter. Just make sure that we got this thing as smooth as we can get. If you're really good, if you can get a really smooth surface, then you can start sanding like at a way higher grit.
I'm not necessarily a turning wizard, so. <laughs> but I mean, if you can get a, a dead smooth surface, and I've seen you know some people that, that turn with skew chisels, you can just get like a perfect, almost gloss finish and start sanding it like a thousand. I, however, we will be starting to sand here at about 400. I think I, I did get it pretty good, but there's probably some tool marks and stuff that will need to be taken out. Uh, was the weird bit turned away? No, it's, well, kind of. Part of it did. It's still kind of there. There's actually another one up here, too, where it kind of bunches up. There's there's a few little... This part, this is where it was, though. Pretty cool. All right, so let's uh, sand this down, turn the speed down. See, you can see all the little tool marks. Once I, once I sand it just a little bit, all these ridges are tool marks. All those shiny spots. And actually, that's... I think we can actually get this better than it is with the tool. Sometimes it helps to just kind of hit it real quick with some sandpaper so you can see, you know, where, where are all the tool marks. See if that helped at all. Yeah. A little bit. You just have to do a little bit of sanding here with the 400. If if you're not getting if it's taking forever to get tool marks out then just you know you can drop down to 240 grit um, that's that's the simple you know lower, lower your grid it'll take less time to get everything all smoothed out and then go go up through your grits in fact i think i'm going to do that for this because that that middle part is just kind of got a bit of a hump bit of a bump in the middle there. Okay, I think we got that bump out. I'm gonna actually get, oops, trash cans right behind me, not across the room. I'm gonna get a new piece of sandpaper. That's the other thing. Don't hold on to a piece of sandpaper forever. Uh, you know, if it seems like it's not really doing the job, then go get a new piece. Looking pretty good. Okay, so we can turn off the dust collector. Get our wet sanding utilities out. And I'll, again, I'll start at 400 grit on this guy. I like using gloves when I'm wet sanding. It just, your, your hands will dry out a lot, especially here since it's so dry. So I've been finding that my hands like me a lot better if I wet sand with gloves on. Let's stop real quick here. Finishing is your favorite? Yeah, I don't know. Finishing is kind of. Uh, do I sharpen my carbide? No, I use the negative rate carbides and they're 
I mean, maybe there's a way to sharpen them, but um, I think that the, the, the proper way to sharpen carbide is you need like a diamond wheel or some other exotic type of material. Um, so I don't know, it's just not, you can, it's, it's not that hard to sharpen the, the regular cutters. You can just get a, you know, a diamond card and, and just rub them on those. But for the negative rake, it'd be so hard to keep it at that angle that it's just not doable, really. Someone might be able to. <clears throat> Sorry, just, just reading through all this stuff. Uh, this is going to be a uh, rollerball pen, actually. It, it could technically be a fountain pen. Um, here's the kit. Kind of show you. Technically, with these, with, with pretty much all... Oh, don't move the parts. Pretty much all the Junior Series kits, you can switch out the nibs make it a fountain pen so that where are we at here <laughs> get it on camera so it'll be just a regular roll it's a little bit different than a ballpoint a little bit nicer um, but i'm pretty pretty stoked about this kit it's got kind of barbed wire and i thought that would really match the the metal stuff in here pretty well oh <clears throat> dinner's ready <laughs> Actually, those are blanks. Turn that off. Get my gloves. Um, yeah, I'm, you could you could switch this out with a fountain pen nib, though, if you wanted. Okay, 400 grit. Get the pen kit out of the way. I can bring my phone up here, kind of see what you guys are talking about. Yeah, I, I'm sure you could maybe get them sanded. I just, it, I don't know, or, or ground, sharpened. I think it's just easier to buy a new one, <laughs> honestly. Um, and I, I don't actually sharpen, uh, even, even with the regular ones, I, I quit trying to sharpen them. They just, they don't seem to... Maybe I'm just not doing it long enough or whatever, but they never really seem as sharp as brand new. You know, it, it can kind of get you through for a little bit, but I, I never found it to be that um, useful. So I try to just, you know, you, you can kind of, depending on the types of materials that you're turning, if you stay away from super abrasive, materials um those those carbide cutters should last like with wood man those things will last forever uh, for some of the materials that i turn i kind of uh, heat heat is going to screw up your your edges that's that's going to really uh, you know if, if you're really going hard on 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 resin blanks bigger ones you'll go through those cutters pretty quick and i tend to do that if i was a little bit slower at turning took less aggressive cuts I think you'll be able to extend the life of them a little bit more. Yeah, <laughs> that burl is huge, isn't it? I know. She, uh, I, I turned a pen for her. For, uh, she has a friend that wanted one uh, turned. So I, I, I turned it up, and, and we just kind of bartered a deal. And uh, she sent that. I was like, oh, my God. I really had no clue what, what she was going to send. And I opened this box up, and I was like, what? That's gigantic. So she has more, and I, I put a link in the, the description of, the, of this video uh, to her website. She's got more of that stuff, I think, and I've, I've already kind of claimed one. If she's got another piece like that, then uh, I'm thinking spheres, definitely dragon eggs. Like, this is the kind of burl. This is, it's an Australian burl, so um, it is the kind of what you typically see Ben over at Ben's Works using, but it's got the perfect... Um, surface those little points and bits for those dragon egg type type blanks 
But I'm thinking, I, and I don't know if I'm gonna use that one or if she's got a bigger cap. Uh, from what I understood, I think she actually has bigger ones than, than that. And I was like, if you got a bigger one that's like pretty much just like that, I want it. So we'll, we'll have to see what she's got. We're, I'm gonna get something else. Stuff is just beautiful though. All right, so let me take a peek at this. I just wanna look at it before we move on. Actually, it doesn't matter. It's good. We're moving up to 600. It's, it's, I put less emphasis on the sanding. I gotta think about what I'm doing here. <laughs> We're gonna be putting a finish on it. So, I mean, the finish is pretty much gonna cover up any, any little flaws or anything. So we're going up to 600 now, and then we're gonna stop. We'll put a CA finish on and we'll be good to go. Rollerball, yeah. Um, I gotta be honest, I don't know exactly what the difference is. They are kind of a higher end pen. Um, they require a cap. You have to cap it, I know that. Um, like with ballpoint pens, they just, they're like the twist pens. They don't need a cap or anything like that. So I, I don't exactly know what the difference is. I don't, I don't know enough about pens. Maybe there's gotta be like, uh, Brian probably knows some, you probably have more knowledge about pens than me. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah, Jen, that's what I, that's what I was talking about. You can use a diamond card on carbide. And it, it works okay. I don't know. I'm, I kind of just... I usually just grab a new one. Alright, so I think that ought to be good. Dry this off nice and... Nice and good. Get our sanding junk out of the way. Dripped a couple spots here and there. The water. Oh, we're losing, we're losing sandpapers. Clean up my brand new, fresh, pretty, pretty bed. Got to keep that thing looking pretty. Yeah, rollerball keeps a wet spot of ink. Ball can't be retracted. Yeah. I don't know. Typically, uh, in, in use, rollerballs are a little bit smoother writing usually, I find. Um, to be honest, I don't really personally care. <laughs> Ball points work pretty good for me, but um, what I find is just the kits are nicer. You know, it's like higher end pens are roller balls or fountains when you're looking at the kits. So they're just in the pen world kind of better, I guess. People, I guess, feel <laughs> in general. I don't really know. I'm sure somebody's got some like super in-depth stuff that they know about. I've always just focused on the blank and making the pen. I'm, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. It writes, I guess. <laughs> I use a rollerball pen to, to sign all of the, the orders that I get when people buy blanks and stuff. And I will say, I do like it. Um, <clears throat> it they're generally pretty smooth writing and it just looks, looks and feels nice to me. Couldn't tell you why though, exactly. First coat of finish. So this is the uh, Mercury Thin Flex. That's what I'm using. It's just kind of the one that I like for finishes. So on this first coat, I'm gonna put it on. I'm not gonna hit it with any accelerator. I want it to kind of soak into any pores or anything like that. And then from here on out, we'll just uh, apply it, hit it with the, the accelerator and then move on. Oh. 
I'm learning all kinds of stuff about roller balls and pens and ball points. We'll just give that a, a minute to kind of set up. It doesn't take that long. This stuff sets up in probably like 10 seconds, but... What you don't want to do is put on another coat early when it's still sort of gooey, and then that's going to screw up your finish. <laughs> that's actually, I'd, I'd say that's another reason why I actually use the, the aerosol accelerator stuff. Just to make sure that the whole surface is, you know, not, there's no gooey parts anywhere. Um, so that the next coat that I apply doesn't, you know, you end up, if there's like sticky parts, it'll rip off your paper towel and it's just, I've had that problem, I guess. It's been a, been so long and I didn't really think about, but that's kind of why I started using accelerators just to make sh absolute sure there is no wet spot, wet parts of the glue on there. Pressurized, yeah. Can you use the same accelerator? Yeah, I use this with, uh, so I'm using Mercury right now for the finish. That's, that's what I like, Mercury Thin Flex. That's what I like for my finishes. Um, I was sealing stuff. I let I like the Starbond thin, and I use the same accelerator on it. And I also use uh, when I'm trying to fill little little you know if there's like pits or something like that. I actually use this Loctite gel, and I use the same accelerator. Basically, accelerator is mostly water, I think. <laughs> um, so I don't think it really makes any difference, but different brands have different amounts of stuff and, and some accelerators are very aggressive. Um, this stuff is not, it's, it's kind of made to, to not cause a big reaction. So that's kind of why I use Mercury's accelerator too. I noticed, I think I used to use lock or not Loctite, um, stick fast. Their accelerator is like pretty aggressive and I, I stopped using that a long time ago. Other brands, you know, may vary. Coat number three, I think. So I'm gonna put four coats on, then we're gonna sand it back, make sure everything's nice and smooth. And then we'll uh, put a, two or three coats on after that. Try and get it on as smooth as possible and then finish everything up. Man, that's looking pretty wicked though. This is gonna be a good pen. Let's zoom you guys in here. Look at that. Wow. Amazing colors in there. The scrunchy parts of the, the down at the bottom there. Really cool. I'm telling you, I could see this type of blank using that type of material. I could see lots of different color combinations. Black and green would be cool probably. Um, purple and green would be awesome. I don't know. Lots of, lots of different ones. Giving you the stare. All right, have a good one, man. <laughs> Easy Bond and Star Bond don't play well together. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I like Star Bond uh, quite a bit, and I like Mercury. Those are probably my two favorites. The, the Bob Smith BSI, that's a good brand. I've never had any issues it seems to be high quality um i don't know and, and the folks at starbond are great they help support you know pen turning turning in general they're they're out there in, in our community so they're they're good people same with mercury um i don't know stick fast i haven't uh, that one has been the only one that i've had maybe i've seen a slight problem here or there um did I put four coats on? I'm gonna put one more. Um, I don't know, most of them are all right. Easy Bond seems fine, I, I don't know. I mean, like I said, honestly, I, I think that they all work pretty well. Um, 
I just, for some reason, kind of gravitate towards the thin flex from Mercury for finishes. It just, I'm able to get that on very smoothly. And it's just because I can apply it the way that I do it quite well. Um, and then that super fast thin is awesome from Starbond. In fact, I actually use mostly Starbond products outside of that super fast thin. Um, when I'm gluing tubes in, I use their thick for to, to paint onto the actual tube itself and then I use the thin flex on the inside of resin you know uh, resin blanks and then every once in a while I actually use their medium too for different types of situations so Starbond's a good good company too I think I like them good good product all right so enough talking let's sand this guy down so we should be nice and and good. So what I'm going to do is we're going to sand this with 400. I think I got, I think this one's a little bit smoother. I don't know. We'll have to see. But I want to get all the little ridges and stuff out that I have put in over the last four coats. Maybe five, I can't remember. And then anything that's shiny at this point is a low spot. So you, you can see a couple little shiny things here and there. Those are little, those little kind of right there, shiny spots, low spots. So we want to get everything all smoothed out the same level. Try to get rid of most of those shiny spots. And then I'm going to try and put on, it's pretty good. I'm actually, I'm going to give it a couple more seconds here. You just have to watch out. You don't want to sand it all off, you know. Don't go too far with your sandpaper. Try to get it on, get your application on as smooth as possible so that you're not sanding off most of what you just put on. All right, so let's go for, I'm gonna kinda just wipe this down one more time. Make sure we got all the sanding dust off. And we'll just try to put on three smooth coats, kind of light coats. And we'll sand it up and polish it. The <laughs> water spins backwards. <sighs> Is that down down under? <laughs> I'm guessing. Upside down. That's funny. It's looking good. One more coat. And I think we'll call this good. the accelerator. I don't know if I did that already or not. Now we're certain. All right, so again, we're going to go back to the 400 grit. Smooth everything out. And we'll go up through the grits with the Zona polishing papers. And we'll be ready to rock and roll. Buff them up and they'll be, they'll be done. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Got a little bit right here, right there. Okay, let's do a little wet sanding. Start with the Zona Green Paper. It's about 750 grit, I want to say, something like that.
Yeah, I don't know what the, I think they're just aluminum crinkle ornaments. He said that he basically just gave them to me at the, the SoCal Pen Turners gathering and said they're Mexican ornaments. Um, I honestly, I'm not entirely certain where you get them. I tried to do a little research. The, the closest thing that I found online was, was, I think they called it like aluminum crinkle ornaments. Art might still be here. I'm not sure. All right. Let's take a look at this thing. See what we're working with. That's looking good. Okay, so next one, we're gonna go with the gray. It's about 11.50 grit, I wanna say. I, I tried to kind of convert from microns and, and find an equivalent um, P grit, which I think is the European uh, grit level for sandpaper. Um, so I think this one's about 11.50, somewhere in that neighborhood. Somewhere between like a thousand and or eleven hundred and twelve hundred, something like that. Green seven fifty. I have no clue what the blue is. It's probably somewhere up in the two to three thousand range, maybe. Is Julie out of here? Have a great dinner. Thanks for stopping by. All right, and then we'll finish up with a little bit of blue. My boy, Blue. Yeah, good luck on the exam. Good luck. It's been a while since I had to take any exams. Okay, I think that is good. Uh, one little tip, so, so I was applying the CA finish and I, and I if you wanna, I explained a lot about the bushings and all that stuff earlier, so you can kind of just rewind. Um, if you want to get a little bit more in depth about CA glue and bushings and all that kind of stuff. But one thing that I will mention about the way that I do it, you know, leaving the bushings on, it's not a bad idea. Another option for, for removing your, your blank is between coats. You know, I stopped and did some sanding. Like you could pop it off at that point and, and kind of, it'll help you, you know, rather than having seven layers of CA glue, You'd only have four at that point, you know, so you could, you could kind of do things differently. I usually find that by the time I'm done, I only put on pretty thin coats um, anyway. And after I'm done sanding everything, it's pretty, you know, I, I don't put a thick CA finish on these things. They usually pop off just fine, but there are other ways that you could go about getting them off. So let's see. Yeah, these guys are kind of stuck. I'm going to kind of tap them on the tailstock and they pop right out. There we go. And then we'll pull out the handy dandy. This is the only reason to you to have a mandrel, <laughs> in my opinion. This is what pen, pen mandrels are good for. Cleaning up the ends after you've popped off your CA finish for your bushings. Make sure there's no, and what I'm doing is I'm just making sure there's no CA finish hanging over the edge because if you try assembling a pen with CA finish excess hanging off the end, then you're gonna crack your finish. And that's no fun. 
Nice, first lathe. I started out on a shop smith. My dad had one. Um, I will say that I was very happy to move up to the Comet next. But mine, the tailstock was, it, I couldn't, it wouldn't, it like wiggled. Like it was, it was the most horrible turning experience ever. Nothing ever came out round. So hopefully your tailstock works, but they're pretty good machines. And it is kind of nice that it's just very, you know, unlimited variable speed. So we got everything good to go. We got it all polished up to the point that next we're going to buff it. So let me turn off my fan here, got my glasses, let's get the wet stuff off the lathe. We'll get the buffing wheels set up and I'm, what I'm doing, um, uh, we mentioned it before, so this is a little vat of a uh, acetone. You can see that there's CA glue all over these things, so I just drop them in my vat of acetone. Only takes a few minutes. I already put the other bushings in there, so those will be done. They're actually probably done already. Um, but I just leave it in there, walk away, and we're good to go. Okay, so let's see. Let me just get a few things kind of arranged over here, ready to go. That's good. Got water on my hands. Nice, yours is rock solid, that's good. <laughs> Finally, a use for my mandrel, <laughs> I know. Yep. That's awesome, congrats. Okay, so let's see if we can get our camera over here without tearing everything apart. Okay. Don't watch. Don't look at the screen. Okay. There we go. Get you guys kind of facing the the buffing zone. Everything working good. Everything's going. We didn't lose the lose the screen over there. Get these cords out of the way. All right, so I'm going to get my RZ mask. Uh, not a good idea to be breathing the fumes from, or not fumes, I guess, but the, the dust from buffing rouges. It's fine abrasives. Your lungs don't want them in there. <clears throat> All right, so the, this is the Beal buffing system, three on, uh, mandrel thing. Um, they actually sell a couple where, where it's just a single uh, mandrel. You can uh, swap them out. Uh, but the first one is the, the Tripoli, T-R-I-P-O-L-Y, not to be confused with the, the waxy stuff, E-E-E. -E -E. Um, Tripoli, it's kind of a red, reddish rouge. And then we'll go with white diamond and then we're going to set up the, the big lathe. I have a, a separate wheel um, and I've been getting really good results with car polish. Uh, kind of got that tip from Ben over at Ben's Works. He's been getting really killer, just glass looking stuff. And um, I'm finding that it, it works the same for me too. Works pretty good as that final finish. Definitely a difference between, I used to just go to white diamond. There's definitely a difference between white diamond and that car polish. All right, so let's do a little bit of buffing. I find buffing, I, I like buffing. Um, and so, I don't know, maybe that's why I get better results buffing. But I like being able to just kind of go back and forth kind of quickly. I don't know. There's no water involved.
really helps to have a really bright raking light uh, to, to look at this stuff. So over on my lathe, I have one of those super high intensity like LED lights. And if you have the, the light bouncing down, you can really see if there's like little scratch or, or you know, flaws or something like that. Um, really helps. Like even this little light, it's really not powerful enough to be super amazing. Um, kind of a, a focused beam seems to work the best. And you'll be kind of surprised to see like, it looks like it's glossy and then you get like a, the right angle with the right light and you're like, whoa, nothing but scratches in there. So once you've removed all the scratches, then you're good to go. Um, the main thing is you got to do it mostly with sanding, you know, in the previous steps. But once you've done the, a good job of sanding, then, you know, just doing the buffing wheels and all this stuff should give you pretty good results <clears throat> on most of your turnings. Um, and another thing that helps with CA finishes on top of, you know, materials like this, this is metal. Um, the metal in this will kind of turn your, your buffing wheels black. So I don't know that it really does any, it like hurts them in any way, but to be honest, I have no clue. So if you don't want that to happen, CA finish on top will fix it. Be sealing it off. And a couple of notes. What I like to do is I come off of the lathe and then I'm using this triple E wheel um, like long ways, which is the opposite of the scratch pattern that I was using, you know, with the sandpaper. Then the next step, I come to the, the white diamond wheel and do it the other way radially and then finish up going longitude or, you know, lengthwise, long, <laughs> longitude, that's not, lengthwise along the blank. And I, for some reason, I just, I find that works. I get best, the best results doing it that way. So let me just make sure that I did all this right. It's looking pretty good. So I'll show you guys, there's no light behind this, but I don't have a light like behind this blank, but I mean, that's looking pretty glossy right there. That's just white diamond. And I'll show you guys what it looks like at the end. I think we can get it even higher polish, you know, brightness, gloss, uh, using the car polish. All right, so again, this was on the lathe spinning and I was sanding it. Now I'm gonna come to the Tripoli wheel and do it the other way first. And I have it running about a thousand RPMs. These are eight inch wheels. Six inch wheels, generally you'll, you'll probably end up speeding it up because it's not traveling as fast. Um, if you had bigger wheels, you'd need to go even slower. It's kind of the same idea as turning. You know, if you're turning a gigantic bowl, you don't want to be going 3,500 RPMs because the outside rim of it is traveling at a faster speed than the center. But you really don't need it to be going super fast to get a good polish. And don't ask me why, but for some reason I do it by hand and then I stick it on this tool and do it this way. I just seem to be able to get, I don't know, better results doing it by hand first on the triple E wheel. Ooh, man, this is going to be a really cool pen.
I'm anxious to turn the, the bottle stopper blanks with those. Um, there, that one that one blank has a couple crack things in, in there. Just, I don't know. Hopefully it'll stay together. And then really anxious to turn the sphere. Again, I hope it stays together. All right. <clears throat> and then I do the opposite direction, perpendicular to the way I was doing it before. And then come back, do it perpendicular once again and finish up that way. Okay, we're done with these two. Final step, add a little bit of car polish to this stuff. So I'll flip you guys around. At this point, I don't really think that you're getting dust in the air from that car polish stuff, so I take my mask off. I think if it were super dangerous, you wouldn't you would see people doing car polishing with face masks on, and I don't see that ever. Oh, I guess I should probably turn you guys around here. this set up like this for now. Ooh, look how smooth that is. I just cleaned the beds. Everything, it's not screeching at me and it moves smoothly. That's great. All right, so this is a tapered mandrel, they call it, and I've got that hooked on to a, uh, another Beal uh, product. I think Beal might actually be shut down right now during the, the, the virus stuff going on. I don't know, um, but I bought the tapered mandrel from McMaster Car. You can get them on Amazon as well. And then, but this is a, a, a Morse taper mandrel thing that's got like a half inch or five eighths. I forget exactly what it is, but um, there's two set screws, <clears throat> two set screws that the tapered mandrel. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Lock onto on this thing. And then this is a string buff. Um, and this is also, I, I did a little bit of experimenting uh, or research. And this, uh, the car polish, it's a higher gloss, you know, a higher um, abrasive level, finer grit than uh, the white diamond. Um, so, and there's lots of different things. There's plastic polishes. There's lots of different car polishes. I'm using the 105. It seems to work fine for me. Um, but the other thing that you also need in conjunction with this is you need a, a softer wheel. And these string buffs are like the softest one, as far as I know, that you can get. So I think that that also helps, you know, finish this off really well. Um, I got these at McMaster Car as well. Um, and it's, I think, a six inch by, I think they call this a one inch. It kind of spreads out a little bit, but I think it's a one inch wheel sideways and by six. So... Having said all that, let's do some polishing. So what I do is I just uh, apply a little bit. I rub it on, shake it up. And, and I, to be honest, I get, I, I haven't tried, I guess, comparatively, but I, I've, I've tried a ton of plastic polishes in the past on pens by just applying it with, you know, like a paper towel with on the lathe with it spinning and I never got particularly fabulous results doing it that way. I don't know. I started using the car polish on larger turnings and I, and I was getting excellent results. Um, but the way that I'm doing it, I think that it, it helps to have a, the buffing wheel method like this. Um, I, I don't, this is not particularly soft. I don't think, I, I, I don't know. I, it's inconclusive really. 
but this seems to be working good for me. So it's the only thing that I can, <laughs> the only thing I can say. I do think car polish is worth trying out though, especially if you, you're kind of like, ah, uh, it kind of gets glossy, but um, I, I wish it was a little bit more. Try out some car polish, because it really, I was, I was kind of surprised. It, it made a, 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 a difference for, for mine. Definitely, definitely higher grit or, you know, glossier than the white diamond. So I just kind of spread it on, apply it like that. Turn the buffing wheel on. And again, this one's a six inch, so I try to go about 12, 1300. And then I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna go sideways. First. And then I'm gonna finish up lengthwise. Gotta be careful, you don't wanna dig that front edge of your blank in if you're doing it this way, but should be safe as long as you're keeping that up. It doesn't, it's, it will be safe. You're not gonna do anything. Not gonna harm yourself. Man, so now look at that. I mean, bam, it is like super gloss. I really like the car polish thing. <laughs> Been getting pretty good results with it. All right, so next one, get our little applicator rag. All right. Nice and glossy. Time for assembly. Sometimes this is the time where you hold your breath. Made it through all the whole process, and then you're like, oh, just don't screw up at this point. <laughs> all right, so it might be a little bit dark over here. Um, I can get a little light stand that might help out a little bit. Actually, it's not that bad looking. There is that thing down in the corner, isn't there? Forgot about that. I might have to get rid of that. I don't, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you like that, that view in the, on, the, on the bottom corner? Is that helpful? Or should I just get rid of that when I'm doing like turning stuff? Because the problem is I'm so far away from my computer that I can't see what it actually looks like on the output. All I can see is the one camera. So let me, let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, what brand? I'm using Meguiar's 105. Is the car polish that I, I've been using. Um, I, to be honest, I don't know if it really matters. I mean, tons of people love Plastex by Meguiar's. Um, ben from Ben's Works, he uses one of, I don't know which exactly it is, but one of the um, turtle, turtle wax brands. Um, let's see, there's also, I'm, I'm just gonna pull out, I have a ton. I have like every, <laughs> every kind of, um, well, plastic polish, I guess. Not not a lot of car polishes. I'll just kind of mention a couple of good ones. Um, there's Novus. Novus is a pretty good pla plastic polish. It may work pretty good. I don't know. I, I kind of, I, to, for me, I kind of get better results with the uh, with this 105. It's I've, I've been getting the best results personally. 
There's also 2020 Plasti Polish Hut Ultra Gloss. I don't know. There's lots of different options between plastic polishes and car polishes. The thing is, if you have the buffing set up, if you have, you know, the white diamond wheel, you go to that thing, whatever you use as, as whatever, you know, whatever um, compound you use, uh, whether it be plastic polish or car polish, it has to be a higher grit level than white diamond buffing wheels. That's, that's the only thing. So it might be worth trying a couple out, I guess. I don't know. <clears throat> All right. So let me see if I can kind of get you guys. A... Oh, I guess I, you know what? I'm going to turn that stupid thing off because I can't see what <laughs> you, you can't even see me anyway. So let me, let me turn that off at least right now. <laughs> that way it's not going to get in the way when I line this up. I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay, so let me gather my thoughts a little bit here. Um, I don't want to screw anything up. So I don't really think that it's going to make any difference how we align these. You know, I had those marks on the insides, but I frankly... I don't really think that it's going to make a whole lot of difference. So I'm not even going to worry about doing that. And, and I, I've been looking at it and, and really the difference between one side or the other <laughs> just doesn't, just doesn't matter. I don't think. So we'll just do it one part at a time here. So this is the nib. This is the center part. Now you do have to make sure that you use the right, you know, these, these two on a junior gent, the, the nib side is bigger than the, the, I don't know, the tail side, whatever. So let's go with this one first. <clears throat> Hopefully my arm isn't totally right in your way. Ooh, that's pretty tight. Had a little bit of glue on the inside of this blank. And it kind of made assembly a little bit more difficult than I would have liked. Still got a little ways to go. All right, made it. Actually, I'm gonna leave that off. The, the end part here. And again, this is the Junior Duke kit. That fit? No. Should have adjusted this a little bit. Whoa! <clears throat> I'd really like to get a new drill press one of these days. I don't particularly love this one. was kind of a consolation prize from my dad. He gave me a really cool drill press. And he's like, I want it back. Here's this one. And I'm like, this one sucks. <laughs> it's okay. It works fine. But Okay, now a little tip for you guys. Grab a little bit of paste wax. You could even use, just use candle wax, honestly. Um, what I find with these rollerball kits is... Let's see if this will do it. I'm going to hold it close to my microphone. The threads are squeaky sometimes. Hear that? 
And that's not really that cool, especially if you're selling pens to people. Um, when <laughs> the first time that they have to change their, their ink out, they're gonna get squeaky, squeaky nib. So get a little bit of paste wax. You don't even need that much. Frankly, literally, I've used candles. Just get some paste wax, tiny bit, and just apply it. Let me get behind the camera here. Just apply it to the, I know it's not really super in focus, but just kind of give it on, on the threads like that. No more squeaky. I mean, really, if, if you're going to go home with anything from this video, that's probably the greatest tip ever. Because I can't stand squeaky, squeaky things. Because I, 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 I was telling you, I use a rollerball uh, for when I do orders. There's, there it is again. Did you hear that? Even the base, even the bottom part. That's terrible. Nobody wants to listen to that. So I grab my paste wax. Just put it on the, the threads there. Hopefully I'm on camera. Doesn't even take that much. You don't need a lot. And no more sque uh, squeakiness. <clears throat> My throat is dry. Uh, maybe I'm talking too much. All right, so looks like this end. Uh, this might be. I think I can actually even see some CA glue. I, I just, I ended up getting it everywhere when I glued the tubes in on these. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try to carefully scrape some of that junk out because it's probably gonna cause problems when I assemble this. I really should have done this before we turned. All I have is just a little scrapey kind of tool. Hopefully I'm on camera. There we go. I'm just kind of going in there and trying to dig out some of that. I got it, I don't know when I got the CA glue. It just, it was all over the place on the inside of this. Highly recommend fixing this kind of a problem before you turn a pen. <laughs> All right, let's let's just give it a shot, see what happens. So far, so good. Oh, not bad. All right. Look at that. Way better than I thought it was going to be. All right. And then now what I like to do is I like to put the pen together. There's two different ways on these roller balls that it can be. Hopefully I can kind of be on camera and you can hear the click. You hear that? So there's two different positions and I think it's like one, you know, one way or the opposite face. And I'm going to look at how this, you know, looks. <clears throat> Frankly, I don't think it matters exactly. Um, but I do kind of like this area. It's got some kind of the, the tight spiraling. Hopefully you can see that right there. So I kind of want to have this area lined up and this side also has the tight spiraling. That's that cool area in the bottom. So I like that and I'm going to put the clip down basically straight down like that. So let me get the clip out. Hmm. 
There we go. And I think I like it just like that. I'm going to take the pen apart. Press it down and we should be good to go. All right, so I'm gonna get you guys on the other side of the lathe where there's light so that we can see this pen. I'm gonna put it down so I don't drop it. <laughs> that thing's looking awesome though. Actually, I, I need you guys and I need to be behind the camera. So let me just drop it down this way here. Hopefully that'll be bright enough. Pretty wicked. That's a pretty nice looking pen, I think. It's got a little silver star on the top. It's got the barbed wire in the middle. Sorry, messing around. So this is the Junior Duke kit. I got it at Turner's Warehouse. Pretty wicked. So I would say that these blanks are perfectly fine. They should work fine for you. So I'll have them listed on my website eventually here, maybe within a week or so. Um, I have two of them left. Let's see, where are they? Two blanks left like that. Exactly the same, same batch and all that kind of good stuff. So pretty cool. All right. Let me scoot back over to the, the intro cam. Dang, I went for a while tonight. It's almost dinner time, guys. So let me see what's happening in the chat here. Yeah, not too bad. I'm, I'm really happy with this thing. I think... Uh, I don't know. Now that I'm under even better lighting, it's really got a lot of depth. Um, it's got, you know, like all those little things and there's like little fins. I don't know. Let me go get the, the camera again. There's, there's better lighting of overhead over here. And I want to make sure that you guys are seeing some of the details in this thing because it's pretty, pretty cool. It's a really neat pen kit. So let me... Do a little bit of finagling with my camera here so that I can get this kind of to work easier, I guess. Okay, so switch camera views real quick. And let me see if I can, at least now I can kind of see on the screen right in front of me. Let me see what I was looking at before. Down here, see that? See the depth in there? It's like there's like fins. It's pretty cool. And again, thank you to, I think, I think it was Jen and Julie. I, I'm, I'm not entirely certain who, who picked the colors, um, but good color combination on this thing. Um, pink and, per I think it was only two colors, pink uh, which I think I might have used the Illumilite's pink dye. I think I might have added a little bit of powder, mica powder. I don't know. You guys can go watch the, the, the casting version of, you know, uh, live stream replay of this. Uh, and then we, I think we just used like Plum Crazy or something like that for the purple. So it's really just two colors and not too bad. Really good, good kit too. Uh, so you can get the kit at Turner's Warehouse. I'll have a link 
uh, for people that are watching this back later uh, down in the show notes. Senpai, another uh, super chat? Thanks, man. I appreciate it. So trademark that combo, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the pen kits at Turner's Warehouse. Um, I don't know if I have a link yet directly to the this kit, but they're up over on Turner's Warehouse, which there is a link in the description uh, that you can get it. And like I said, a few people were talking about it. Tur Turner's Warehouse has excellent service, lots of a huge variety. And uh, if you're not aware, if you're not familiar with Turner's Warehouse, Chad Schimmel runs it, and he's a YouTuber also. Um, he got into the uh, selling the the pen kit pen turning supplies a while ago, and he just keeps expanding stuff. He's awesome. Uh, we work together a lot. So links in the the show notes right now to Turner's Warehouse in general. And again, this one's called the Junior Duke D U K E. So yeah. That would look good in your pen collection. <laughs> nice. I agree, Billy. So I'll probably have this thing up for grabs if anybody wants to, to buy the pen. Um, I'll, I'm having, my wife usually takes care of listing, taking pictures and, and uh, uh, po putting posts up on, on social media uh, for actual finished pieces. So I'll, I'll get this in her hands and she'll get it up on my website as soon as she can if anybody's interested in purchasing it. <laughs> Will I be sending you the pen? I don't know. We'll have to think about it, Jen. Maybe I'll maybe I'll send you another pen, a surprise pen. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, in in the links to Turner's Warehouse, anything that has the NVWW like Ref NVWW is a, a an affiliate link to Turner's Warehouse. Chad sh set that up, uh, kind of to just honestly to to to. Uh, I don't know, give back to me for, for sharing uh, Turner's Warehouse stuff all the time. Um, I, I would do it whether I was an affiliate or not. Ch uh, Chad's got a great store, and he's him and uh, Carrie are running a great shop over there. But, uh, yeah, I do get a little kickback. It costs you nothing. You don't get anything. Uh, or there's no extra charge for affiliate links uh, to people buying stuff. What it is is it just tells Chad that I referred someone, and then I get a little discount, or not a discount, a, a referral fee from him. So it's pretty cool, pretty awesome that he did that. <laughs> um, I have no clue how much it's going to cost. Uh, like I said, it will. I'll hand it to my wife, and she'll kind of take care of it from there. I try to. I, I'm I'm good with blanks. She does the the finished stuff. Jamie, what's up? You just just barely made it. Yeah, it's a little bit over, but uh, it turned out good. Let me show you the the pen. Switch to this camera view. <clears throat> Turned out pretty good. I'm, I'm very, very excited about these blanks. So we use the Junior Duke kit. It's got some barbed wire in the middle there. It's got a star on the top. Sorry, I should probably look at the, the viewfinder, not the screen. <laughs> uh, and then we got the, the crinkle, aluminum crinkle ornaments from Art. And it turned pretty good. I had no problems with it. Surprisingly, I was a little worried about that one, but it turned pretty good. Uh, so uh, between uh, the pen, like I said, my wife will get that listed, and then there's going to be two more blanks. I got two, only two left. We, we only did a, a set of three. Um, so there's only two more of these guys left, but I'll get these. I'm in charge of listing my blanks, uh, so I'll get these guys listed on my website if anybody wants to turn one of those things pretty pretty nice blanks and if you uh, you know if you're a caster highly recommend this crinkle aluminum stuff if you can find it let's see if we can get the casting view but man just really cool cool looks in there so jamie it's always time for a super chat thanks brother i appreciate it yeah so let's see see here yeah thanks for joining the fun joe nice anyway i should probably get going but i appreciate you guys all coming joining the fun 
seeing this thing come to life, it turned out pretty good. Uh, so like I said, I'll have all that stuff up on my website soon. Um, should probably quit clapping. It's probably really loud in the microphone. Uh, Friday is going to be the next live stream at 3 p.m. Pacific time. We will do some Dunkin' Junk. We got some stuff, uh, some stuff in, some junk to dunk. We got a lot of stuff, actually. I'm I was trying to think of if I have a plan for Friday. I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to do some pretty fun blanks. I finally got the... Um, I don't know if we're going to do this, but we got some... Uh, I got a piece of oak from Craig, uh, and this was, I, I, offhand, it's been like three hours of streaming, so I, can't, I don't remember the details, but I stabilized this, this piece of oak, and I thought we could do that. I don't know if that's what we're going to do on Friday, but um, it's a pretty cool old piece of oak, and it has some really wicked grain in it, so we can maybe do something with those. Uh, I just got a really cool package that I, I'm going to, it's a surprise, I'll show you guys on Instagram tomorrow. Um, and then, I don't know, we got all kinds of different stuff. So Friday should be fun. We'll do some more experiments, have some fun with resin casting. Uh, yeah. So I hope you guys all have a good night. Um, there will be a video this weekend too, also. So two weekends in a row, make sure you check out the Jawbreaker Sphere video. Uh, but we'll have a new one, kind of a, a resin casting tips type of video, uh, this Sunday. So I should have that all, all ready to go. So be looking for that. Uh, but, uh, other than that, I guess I'll see you guys all on Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific time, and we'll do a little bit more Dunkin' Junk. So have a great night, guys, and I will see you on Friday.